Okay, so what did you discover about your glucose over the last five days as you ate your typical foods and drinks and engaged in your normal routine? Gaining this insight is the first step in revealing what you can do to spend more time in your goal range. What did you see after a meal? How fast and for how long did your glucose go up and stay up? Which meals, snacks, or drinks pushed your glucose up the most? Were your glucose values going up and staying up higher or longer than you expected? Which foods were the biggest surprise? Glucose levels change all the time. They increase as our body turns food into the energy we need to function, and then decrease once the energy is used. Many foods can cause your glucose to rise after a meal. It's expected that glucose levels will fluctuate in response to multiple factors, including foods and drinks. But it's important that your glucose doesn't go up and stay up. Glucose values consistently above 180 can cause damage to your body. Some foods, especially those with carbohydrates or carbs, can cause the glucose to go up quite a bit. Sugar, rice, pastas, and potatoes are all carbs. We often call this rise in glucose a glucose spike. A spike is how high the glucose goes and how long it stays high. But glucose spikes from carbs can be reduced if they're eaten with foods that have protein or fat. For example, eating a piece of toast alone versus toast with a cheese spread will have different effects on your glucose level. In the Stello app, when you see your glucose go beyond the green rectangle, you may be having a glucose spike. The good news is that there are ways that you can help prevent or minimize glucose spikes. You may choose to avoid certain foods or eat a smaller portion of the food that causes your glucose to rise. You can also add more healthy fats, fiber, and protein to what you eat to help limit spikes. Or you can swap certain foods for a lower carb or lower sugar option. For example, snacking on nuts instead of chips. You can even change the order in which you eat certain foods, choosing vegetables or protein before carbs. That often makes a real difference. Let's see what Laura discovered about her glucose using Stello. I typically meet friends at a local coffee shop on a break from work, and I grab a large latte with vanilla syrup. Each morning when I looked at my Stello app after I finished my latte, my glucose was above 180. And sometimes it stayed above 180 for a couple of hours. I really look forward to that time with my friends, so I tried experimenting with a smaller size. But my glucose still went above 180. So this last time, I chose the smaller size again, but also asked for a sugar-free vanilla syrup. And guess what? I stayed below 180. It was an easy enough change. And I'm definitely still enjoying my coffee with friends. One thing about me, I love pasta and tomato sauce. And this past week has really been eye-opening for me. I saw that when I ate pasta first, or just alone with no vegetables or protein, my glucose spiked after meals. So I made a few changes to try to lower my spikes. I added broccoli and chicken to my pasta, but my glucose was still over 180. Then I read the label of my pasta sauce and found out it had a lot of added sugar. The next time, instead of red sauce, I just used some olive oil, Parmesan cheese, and a few chopped cherry tomatoes. I also served myself a smaller portion. These changes really reduced how high my glucose spiked and how long it stayed up there as well. Using Stello to experiment makes me feel empowered to keep making choices that work for me. I decided that my goal isn't just to lower my glucose after I eat, but also to reduce the amount of time my glucose is out of the green rectangle. Check out the difference. Tracking my food in the events tab is really helping me to look back and reflect on my choices. There are so many ways to lower your glucose, and the best way to figure out what works best for you is to just keep experimenting. Your Stello can help you visualize how different foods affect your glucose spikes. For the next week or so, focus on the foods you eat and how making changes in the amount or types of foods can help keep you in the green zone. Then come back and watch the next video.